apartment in Hanoi. So, in the last video, when I left you, things are a little bit perilous, but I'm happy to say that Alan is feeling fantastic, and we have spent the last four days just relaxing, walking around the old quarter of Hanoi, and it has been fantastic. And I think that's exactly how we want to spend our time in Hanoi, not going to see all of the famous attractions, but actually learning a little bit about the town and walking through the old streets, the winding streets, eating great food. So hopefully that's what I'm going to share with you today. Good morning. We are here for breakfast and we're having Boon Ok. Now Boon is a vermicelli style noodle in Hanoi. Boon Ok is very famous because it has snails. We came to a spot that was recommended by our Halong Bay travel agent Kim and she said it's fantastic. They have two different kinds of snails. They have these balls, which I was worried that they were pork, but they said no, there's no pork in the entire dish. Now you're thinking, of course it's a seafood dish, but so many seafood dishes in Vietnam has pork. I think this is actually a fish style cake. It's in a tomato broth that's sweet, sour, light. We've got some fresh herbs here. We also had the tiny little snails. And what I love about eating in Hanoi is it's like a choose your own adventure. So when you eat in Saigon, you get the broth and maybe you'll add a little bit of sweetness or chili, but here it's a little bit different. So we have this delicious spicy chili that is homemade. But then we also have this garlic chili kind of vinegar that makes it a little bit tart. And I've never actually seen this on the table. I think it's almost like a plum garlic vinegar. That's interesting. Anyway, you give a lot of depth and then you always get this basket of fresh greens, which is why I love food here in Vietnam. But let's get into these snails. What I love about these noodles is even though they're vermicelli, there are several styles of vermicelli. These ones aren't too thin. Woo. Now it's in a hot broth, and so if you eat it right away, it's gonna feel like it's a little bit raw, but the longer it sits there, the longer it cooks. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. A little bit chewy, but this broth, mmm, is very light. It's very light. It's definitely sweet, a little bit sour, not no spice at all. And then this, what I think is like a fish cake. Salty, sweet, sour. Mmm. So good. That was an amazing breakfast. Oh, I love snails in Vietnam. And I'll say this, if you meet people and they say, oh, if you need any recommendations, take them. Because I wouldn't have known about this place. People don't write about this place. But I asked the tour operator or the travel agent that booked my Halong Bay tour and she loves food too. So she had lots of really great recommendations for me. I will say this, if there are things on the table, I always take it as a sign to put it in my dish. And so I put that chili paste and then I also put the garlic chili vinegar. It was amazing. I mean, it was good, but then I put that in it. It was so much better. It was only 55,000 for a dish, two types of snails and then also those fish balls so good next up we're going for coffee want all my tips including what didn't make it into videos check out my vietnam guide for what to see eat and do plus crucial tips for renting a motorbike in vietnam Now one of the things you absolutely have to do in Hanoi is have cafe trung or egg coffee. You can have it all over Vietnam but it started right here and so we didn't have it until we came to Hanoi. Now the most popular place is cafe Siang. There the owner was the first one to start it. It was out of necessity. After the war there was no fresh milk and so a lot of people started to use condensed milk but to have a frothy coffee you need to have something else and so he started to beat egg into the coffee. It would take 20 minutes per coffee but it became very famous. Now today it's much easier to whip a coffee up 
but they still make the original coffee. We're not at Cafe Xiang, which everybody goes to, and that's because the family, generations down now, have other outlets. This is one of their cafes. It's across from the lake. It's hidden down this alley and it's fantastic. Now I will say this to you. A lot of people get the original coffee, which is hot, but nowadays a lot of Vietnamese just drink cold coffee. And so that is actually the best way to have it. Otherwise the hot one almost feels like a dessert, but the cold one is really delicious. So here you'll see, we've got that frothiness up top, we've got the coffee down below, and then here they also add a little bit with some latte art. Always try the top first. Mm, you will never know it's egg. It's just this creamy deliciousness, like a whipped meringue almost. Mm. A little bit of sugar in there. This is cold with ice in it. You mix it together. This is delicious. If you've heard from people that egg coffee is not good, that's because they didn't have a cold. That was fantastic. We ended up staying there a really long time. We had the egg coffee and then we had the salted lemon drink, which is actually very refreshing. It might seem weird to have salted lemon, but it's actually great, especially in this heat. It's very humid. Now, I didn't find this place by myself. A couple days ago, we did another Guru Walk store. So I did one in Saigon. We did two in Hoi An. We did one here. This one was a little bit different. It was mostly like walking around with somebody who knew the city and they taught you a lot of kind of just interesting, quirky things. This was one of the places. Anyway, we are going to go check out the pagoda here at the lake. The lake is beautiful and we're just across the street. Because it's a little bit hazy, I think it's the perfect time to go. This is one of two lakes here in the city. And there used to be a number of endangered turtles here. Unfortunately, they're all gone. However, I believe the last two remaining ones have been stuffed and are on display in the middle of the lake. I believe there's a museum and Hops a pagoda, we're gonna go check it out. Uh, the interesting thing I learned on Guru Walks is actually pagoda is a place of worship for Buddhists, but if there's a temple, it's non-denominational, anyone can go there. So that's quite interesting. All of the pagodas and maybe temples, I think in Hanoi are free to go inside, except for this one. I think it's because it's such a big tourist attraction. It's the weekend, it's Friday still, so it's not busy yet, but tonight this place who will be so busy and throughout the weekend. So we're gonna show you a little bit of that later because it's actually a really fun place to be. It gets busy, but it gets busy with Vietnamese. Right now is peak Vietnamese traveling season. All right, so it looks like this is where you get your ticket. Adults 30,000, so under $2, about a dollar and a half. Now what's interesting here is you'll always see these two protecting animals outside. We've got the tiger to one side and then also the dragon to the other. Now if you're looking to get any Instagram photos you're going to have to come here early because this is the most popular place to visit around here. Lots of people want to get their picture taken. So inside you can see the two last turtles that were preserved and turtles are one of four sacred animals here in Vietnam. Not surprisingly, it represents longevity, but you'll find turtles, uh, symbols of turtles, sculptures and stories of turtles throughout folklore in Vietnam. So I'd say you probably need 15 minutes here unless you're planning on spending time in the temple. Um, it's a practicing temple to worship, but if you're not, you can go in, look around, but no photos. I would recommend coming here early in the morning when it's nice, quiet, breezy. I think that's the most enjoyable. Also, no kids. Kids here seem to be very well behaved, but they're still kids. So if you want to have just kind of a nice relax, relaxing time, 
morning is a place to come. I think we're gonna move on because down the lake is the first ice cream brand that was affordable to Vietnamese and it still exists. So we're gonna go check it out. Holy, I have never seen anything like this. I'm under a tree, but it's not even really raining by me. It's just raining along the lake. Look, no rain. We also visited the Long Bien Bridge, which was heavily attacked during the Vietnam War. It still remains today, although I would say if you don't have a lot of time, you can definitely skip this one. Well, the rain has stopped, but the humidity hasn't. So it's a good thing we came to Cam Trang Tien, which is an ice cream shop that's been around since 1958. But it also has historical significance because the French actually brought ice cream to Vietnam, but it was not affordable for most people. So when this shop opened, it was probably the first ice cream brand that was accessible to everyone. To this day, it still is. So you can get ice cream, you can get soft serve, and you can also get these popsicles. I wanted to try the durian ice cream, and unfortunately today they only have vanilla. So instead we decided to go for a popsicle. Now, I tried durian for the first time in Indonesia, and there are some that I like, some that I don't. So my advice for you is, if you tried durian once and you don't like it, keep trying. My preference is actually the very yellow ones, and I also think durian is really good in other things like ice creams, pies, things like that. Let's see if Vietnamese durian is great in a popsicle. Mm. The ice cream brings out the fruitiness of the durian. There still is that funky flavor, but it's actually sweet, fruity, with just a little bit of a funkiness. So if you like blue cheese, you will like this. It's like a funky, blue, cheesy, fruity kind of treat and it's only 12,000 dong. And if you're not into trying durian, don't worry. They also have classic vanilla, coffee, apricot. They also have interesting flavors like rice flake, black sesame. There's something for everyone. At 12,000, it's worth a try. dinner we got some snails with lemongrass and chili you'll see a lot of utensils here in lemon lime and from forks to knives to spoons everyone kind of disinfects before you eat street over things are much calmer I'm really glad we went to the place that we went because that woman was not aggressive trying to get people in I think she was very honest because at the end uh, she showed us the bill but then also pointed to on the menu just to remind us that she was giving us the fair price but that was beer street and I think we're looking for via Hoi Junction because that is where you can get the fresh beer from Hanoi 
and traditional Vietnamese snacks. I think it's three minutes away, just up ahead of us. But already I would say Beer Street, pretty touristy. The food is okay. It was good. Our snails were good. But you're going to pay those prices. If you just walk up a street over, you're going to have better food, better prices. All right, so we're headed towards our Airbnb because I know there are restaurants there. The challenge here in Vietnam is you really have to be on top of the time. So if you want to eat lunch after 2 p.m., it's really hard. After 8 p.m. for dinner, it becomes difficult as well, even in the cities. In Saigon, after 8 p.m., it was challenging, and we're also finding that here. So it's 8 o'clock right now, so we've got to find somewhere to eat. Our second to last stop tonight is actually at a spot I really wanted to share from the beginning tonight and it's to share Bia Hoi. Bia Hoi is fresh beer. Now the French initially brought beer to Vietnam and they really wanted to discourage Vietnamese from drinking rice wine. That didn't work. People here still drink rice wine but now they also drink beer. So instead of a traditional brewed aged beer, this is fresh beer so it needs to be consumed within 24 hours. The really interesting thing about it is that depending on who makes it, it can be up to 50% rice. So it has definitely like a lighter and uh, lighter taste, lighter color, also lighter price. It's only 13,000. You'll find this at restaurants, small little spots, and they always tend to have traditional food. Here they have salted frog, pig's ear, a bunch of other things. So many really interesting things on the menu. But we've only got room for a beer. But I really want to come back from that salted frog, so maybe tomorrow. The beer itself is really good. I thought when we had this, to have the cheapest beer in the world, that it would be kind of gross, but everybody just drank it because it was cheap. Not true. It's just nice, refreshing, light. A lot of places will keep it in a, like a freezer or a fridge, so when you get it, it's ice cold. Before I end this video, I want to share one more thing. We're going back to the lake because Alan wants to try something else that will be much easier. But in my next video, I'm going to share with you more traditional food from Hanoi because we only have a few days left and there are so many things I want to eat. See you then. You can do it. You can do it! I believe in you! <laughs> to try it. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.